Imagine a tomato plant. Time and effort and sunlight and water and soil all go into growing that plant, but all you can eat are just a few red fruit. What if there was a way to turn the rest of that plant into something edible too? This video is the first in a series about food, biology, and eating, all focused on the central idea of what's in your food. Today's episode is all about a future technology that could turn everything from wood to grass cuppings to plastic into something edible. And it's in collaboration with Mark KGAA Darmstadt, Germany. We need the ability to better make, allocate, and distribute food. A WHO report in 2000 estimated that 25,000 people die from hunger and hunger-related causes every day. Over 800 million people in the world suffer from hunger, and 1.3 billion people lack regular access to nutritious and sufficient food. The UN estimates that the world will have nearly 10 billion people in 2050, and all of those people will also need to eat. To feed not just the people we have now, but also the increasing population of the future, we may need to increase agricultural production by 50% between 2013 and 2050. Now, one possible way to do this is to shift diets towards ones that favor vegetables more than meat. A 2016 study showed that in general, the amount of people an individual piece of land could feed was higher for diets that relied more on plants than for those that relied more on meats. But another possibility would be to get more edible product out of what we're already growing. So let's go back to that tomato plant. You can eat the tomatoes, but there's so much unused biomass there. The leaves, the stems, the roots. That all takes resources and solar energy to make, but you can't eat it in the end. Usually, we can't eat that biomass because it contains things we can't break down, like cellulose. Cellulose is a big, long polymer molecule made up of lots of sugar rings, and it's what gives plants their shape and structure. Currently, we do sometimes break biomass like this down to make other stuff. So biomass can be converted into ethanol and biofuels, and there are projects that turn things like corn and beets into omega-3 oils using algae. Biomass can also be turned into food additives and supplements. And interestingly, lignin from wood can be used to make smoky flavor additives. But what if we imagine an invention that could turn inedible biomass into food? All right, honesty, pulling back the curtain moment. Merck KGAA came to me with an idea about a video around their future Insight Prize, which this year was awarded to some researchers who are working on food generation, turning inedible biomass into something you can eat. But when I started researching this, they hadn't awarded the prize yet. So I decided to brainstorm how I would create a food generator like this. And my first thought was bacteria because bacteria are awesome. I figured it could be kind of similar to the symbiotic relationship that cows have with their gut bacteria. So in the cow gut, ruminococcus bacteria break cellulose down into glucose. They can then continue to break that glucose down into other components through glycolysis. And they make things like butyrate, acetate, and propionate that are then used by the cow. So what if we could just do that, but not in a cow, but in like a big bioreactor and get something edible out of it. I sort of imagined placing a big hunk of plant stems into a bioreactor full of bacteria, letting the bacteria ferment all of those stems into sugar, and then, you know, being able to consume that sugar. And I talked a big game about my bacterial breakdown idea, but then the winners were announced and they were doing something similar, except a billion times cooler. Cause you know, they work in this field. So the prize went to Dr. Ting Liu at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign and Dr. Steve Techman of Michigan Tech. They're using bioengineered microorganisms to break down not just inedible biomass, but also plastic. All right, first step, you have to break the polymers into monomers. Whether you're thinking of cellulose or plastic, a lot of it is polymers. Long molecules made up of smaller, often repeating components called monomers. And those monomers are usually a lot easier to break down. So step one is to break the polymers into monomers. This could happen enzymatically or chemically or even using things like heat. The output of that step could then go into a system where the monomers are further broken down and used by bacteria. And then you dry the bacteria down and eat it as a protein source. Microbial biomass is approximately 55% protein, so it would be like a protein powder that you could add to a smoothie or bake into something. 
The researchers envisioned that you could also combine that bacteria with bacteria that have been engineered to have specific biochemical pathways to make things like key amino acids or lipids so that you could have a more complete and nutritious powder. Cellulose and biomass eating bacteria make sense to me, but what bacteria even eat plastic? Turns out some scientists looked at bacteria at a recycling plant a few years ago and they found bacteria that could eat PET. PET is polyethylene terephthalate, your number one plastics. The scientists found that this specific bacteria contained an enzyme that could munch up PET into its component parts, specifically terephthalic acid and ethylene glycol. This specific bacteria, Idionella sacchiensis, actually uses PET as its main carbon and energy source. That's really cool. It's growing by eating plastic. Different groups are making improvements to the bacteria's enzymes now to make them even more efficient. Now, this is still a future technology at the moment, but that's the whole point of Merck KGAA Darmstadt Germany's Future Insight Prize. The whole goal is to stimulate innovative solutions to some of humanity's greatest problems. And their plan is to give out a million euros a year for the next 35 years. It's not bad. The money goes to researchers and groups working in important fields like food generation in 2021, multi-drug resistance in 2020, and pandemic prevention in 2019. So these are clearly really pressing important topics. Next year's prize is going to be around converting carbon dioxide into fuels. You can find out more about the prize and about this year's winning project by visiting the link in the description below. And remember, this is the first in a series of food videos coming out right here on this channel this summer. Next up is a story about some really, really expensive peanut butter. This isn't it, um, and the scientist in the next video specifically told me I could not eat the very expensive peanut butter. Or, I mean, I could, but she did not recommend it. But subscribe to make sure you don't miss it, and until then, go forth, do science, and have a snack.